Which Fed actions will prove most supportive for the markets? Let's ask Charlie Bobrinskoy. He's the vice chair and head of the investment group at Ariel Investments. All right, Charlie. Let, you, you know, I guess the question is, there's often perceived to be this trade-off, right? You know, the Fed can be a little more dovish in the near term, maybe. It, you know, Where do you see it as them having the greatest bang for the buck for the markets? Um, and, and what's the right course they should take if for investors who want to see positive, you know, returns on risk assets uh, for the next several years here? Well, uh, there's the right course that I think they should take, and then there's the course that I expect them to take. And unfortunately, those aren't, aren't the same right now. The, the Fed got embarrassed. The Fed officials who said there was no inflation, and then when there clearly was inflation, said that it would tra be transitory. And now that it's clearly not transitory, they're trying to say that it's all about an overheated economy. It's not about an overheated economy. The economy is not overheated. It's about way too much money supply and way too large deficits and way too much stimulus. Those are what's caused inflation, and it's going to take a while for it to come down. So the short answer is they should do nothing to provoke a recession. They should not be so draconian in their policies that they send us into a recession because this economy on its own is in reasonable shape. But I am worried. They were embarrassed, and they're going to try and prove that they've, they've got it now and that they're going to do some hawkish things. So I am worried about what they're going to do. Meaning you think they're going to kind of overdo it just to make the point of, of being, you know, hey, we're really serious about inflation. I wonder, and this is going to sound crazy, but would even that be a good thing in the long run? Look, it is a, you would know better than anybody the risk that inflation stays persistent here with everything we're seeing in this bizarre labor market and the wage pressures. Maybe it's not the worst thing for them to err on that side versus doing too little. So let's just talk about wage pressures for a little while. Wages are going up at less than the rate of inflation. Wages have gone up about 5% over the last year, and inflation's gone up 8%. Wages went up about 3% last year when inflation was about 7.5%. So there is no real wage explosion. That's just not true. And so I, I don't want the Fed to cool down the economy. The economy is kind of already cool on its own. I don't think it's in recession, but it's not overheated. So the short answer is I don't want them being aggressive to, to create a recession that otherwise wouldn't occur. Maybe the way I'd say it, and then we can move off the topic so we don't bore people to death here, but is it possible that inflation started the wage pressures to some extent? Obviously, there's a mix, there's pandemic, but we know people responded to headline inflation by with sort of bidding that up. But is it possible now that the tightness in the labor market and those pressures are what pulls the inflation rate higher, that we've had a complete role reversal here? I mean, that's what it feels like is the risk that, yes, you know, 6 percent didn't drive us to 10 percent inflation, but it could keep us from going to 2. No, that's 100 percent right. That's why we're not going to have no inflation going forward. That's why we're going to have 5 percent at least over the next 12 months is because People who've been burned by not getting a real increase in their wages in a tightened market are now demanding real increases in their compensation, which they should, which they're entitled to. And so that's why it's not going to zero. That's why inflationary expectations matter. Believe me, I'm not downplaying any of that. I'm just we're talking about the Fed and what the Fed should do and what the Fed should not do is pretend like we have an overheated economy, which we don't.